I'm Jonathan Robinson, and this is Fred Buzz. Welcome back to the Fret Buzz. I have some good videos today. I think I've got a good mix of large channels you've probably heard of and some channels I am almost sure that you have not. So let's jump right in. Video number one is one of the larger channels and this is sort of a follow-up. I've mentioned this before. It's Matthew Scott. I really enjoy Matthew Scott's channel. I, I like the topics he talks about. He loves vintage guitars. He loves vintage amps. He's a great player. Uh, the name of this one is What Happened to My 1958 Gibson Les Paul I Bought from Goodwill. He got a guitar from Goodwill. I mentioned the first video where he talked about it on Fret Buzz a while ago. And it's been a while and I've been waiting to see what comes of that guitar. There hasn't been much. And then this popped up uh, and he sort of explains they ran into some problems, things he could not fix. Uh, so he sends it to a buddy of his who is sort of an expert in, in you know, fixing up vintage guitars. And this video is great because he sort of goes through all the problems, what they had to do, it's fairly extensive. Uh, you get to see some of the choices he makes, and I think this is what's really fascinating about it, is that you know, if you have a vintage guitar, especially if you buy one that's player's grade, or even worse, is not really playable, you're gonna have to make some choices uh, you know, that, that sort of you toe that line of, do I want it collectible and original, or do I want it where I can play it? Uh, and I think you know, he does a really good job of figuring that out, and communicating that. So check this one out, Matthew Scott, what happened to my 58 Gibson Les Paul from Goodwill. Um, especially if you watch the first one, I believe there will be at least one more, hopefully two videos in this series from, from Matthew Scott because he actually doesn't even have the guitar back yet. So I think he mentions there that he may do like an unboxing and a reaction when he first gets it back and plays it and then he wants to do like the whole story once he gets it sort of dialed into his playing style which I think will be fantastic. So hopefully he does them both. I think they'll be great. Um, and like I said, I really enjoy it. I think it's a cool series and a cool idea. So that's video number one. Number two, another channel I'm pretty sure that I've mentioned before, but much smaller. It's Fret Junkies. It's my friend Richie, uh, who I say my friend, but I really only know him from, from the internet. Uh, but I feel like we're friends. I hope he does as well. And this one is, it's called How to Get the Best Tone from Your Tube Amp or from a Tube Amp. Um, Richie is a fantastic player. He's a tone junkie for sure, and he gets really great, especially sort of like vintage blues tones. Uh, I mean, yeah, he just, so all of his videos are sort of inspiring just from the sounds he gets and the way that he plays. He plays with a lot of feeling and emotion. Uh, so just, just based on that, his channel's worth checking out. But this is a really good sort of, tip video for how to maximize your tube amp, especially if you have a loud tube amp that's maybe hard to play at home, especially right now when people aren't gigging. And even on gigs, if you're like me, you know that these days it is hard to, to get the sound guy to let you turn up very much. So uh, he's talking through attenuators uh, a little bit. Um, and it's, it's, you know, we hear so much now about the Oxbox and the Captor X, and, and I have a Captor X and I love it and it's great. But he's talking about the old school, uh, the, the, the hot plates. He's talking about one of those, but that's not the most interesting part of the video. He talks about another method that Marcus King uses. Uh, if you've read much about Marcus King, he takes like a tube screamer basically and uses that as an attenuator for his amps. Richie goes through that, he lets you hear the difference between um, that, that hot plate uh, and you know, using a pedal. Um, pretty cool results. I think you might be surprised at, at how it all sounds. Uh, and, you know, if you got a Tube Screamer type pedal, this might definitely be something that you wanna, you wanna check out for getting kind of more cranked tube sounds at reasonable volume levels. Number three is more of a topic and less a video. I've done this a few times before where I said, you know, there's, there's something going on that's sort of like news in the guitar world. It's worth knowing about, it's worth checking out these videos. Uh, so, you know, for years we've had the debate about uh, Kemper and Helix and Axe Effects, you know, fragile stuff. Are they replacing tube amps? Are tube amps better? What sounds better? Can you tell a difference? Does it matter? Uh, there's a new player in the game uh, for a while. Like I said, the three I mentioned were sort of been the ones, uh, you know, that I always see, Kemper, the Line 6 Helix stuff. Uh, and now they've got all the HX stomp and all, all that, all you know, the whole line of that. And then the Fragdoll Axe Effects stuff, I think we're up to the Axe Effects 3. 
all that stuff sounds great. It's cool. Um, most of it I've got to play around with. The new one, though, is the Neural DSP Quad Cortex. Uh, so that's supposed to be the latest and greatest. Some people are sort of touting that as a game changer for amp modeling and you know, they're saying like the future is here, the next gen is here. Paul Davids, you know how much I love Paul Davids. He did a fantastic video breaking it down, really honest uh, and I thought really you know, pretty darn frank about what he likes, what he doesn't like. Um, and, and I think the name of his video is something like, you know, is this a game changer for, for guitar amps? Obviously I'll link to his video. Um, but then he, he, he sort of compares it to a Kemper and, and some real amp sounds, you know, and I think you may be surprised with the results. You may be surprised with what he says. Um, I don't think it was a runaway victory for the, the neural DSP quad, even though, or the quad cortex, even though it sounded fantastic. It did really great. Really cool video, great insights from someone who obviously knows uh, and someone who, who I really respect and enjoy their videos. So I also put a link since I said like it's really more of a, this is more of a, you know, not so much a particular video, but, but a subject being, you know, is this the next generation of ant modeling? So I, I also put a link to um, Rabia Masad, another great effects guy who I love his demos. He did sort of an unboxing and, a, you know, first reactions. And there's a ton of those. So if you watch either one of these, it's going to pop up in your, you know, in the suggested videos underneath. Check that out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about the Neural DSP stuff. Do you think it's as great as everybody says? Is it going to change the game or is it just another, another modeler? So check it out. Number four, talked about this guy before, but never directly, only when he was on another channel. Uh, Doi Vidas, I'm probably saying his name horribly wrong. Um, Doi Vidas, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how you say it, but the link will be there. I love his videos. I've been watching them forever. He's sort of the ones that got me is, you know, he is always sort of set up, you know, playing outside in an open space. People are coming by and they're requesting crazy things and he always listens to it for like 10 seconds. And then does not play it exactly, but does a really cool, vibey rendition of the song they want to hear. Eh, my guess is he probably has some inkling of how to play most of these songs. Um, this one, someone asked him to play uh, Metallica's Inner Sandman, and he does a really cool jam, obviously based around that riff. Um, and he's got a, you know, he's got a cool setup with, you know, his guitar, uh, looper, uh, electric guitar, looper. Um, drum pads and things so he's making great loops like it sounds like a produced well done song by the end it's really cool to see him create those things in real time and if you gig at all you've had that experience where people want to hear strange covers and i know that i've had nights where people you know ask me for a request and it seems like i know everyone and i nail it and that is like the best feeling ever and then i have nights where people ask and ask and ask and ask and i'm like what in the world are, why are you asking me for these insane songs? <laughs> what? And they're obviously things they're not, you know, probably not things I'm gonna know or be able to do. Sometimes they're just way out there. Sometimes they're just hard things to do by yourself. Um, so I can really relate to this and it is amazing to me how well he does at it. So check this out. Uh, again, it's basically his version of Metallica's Inner Sandman. Uh, even if you're not a Metallica fan, I imagine you will enjoy it. So check that out. Awesome channel. Another, again, a big channel, but lots of really fun, entertaining videos. This is a very tiny channel, tiny channel number five. Uh, his name, and I'm going to look it up uh, so that I make sure I have a feeling I am still going to say it wrong. Krenar Silku, or Kilku, I'm not sure. I apologize profusely for not knowing how to actually pronounce that, but it's, so Krenar Silku Guitar, this guy just kind of, you know, we've popped up. Uh, I think he commented on one of my videos. I went and looked at his stuff. It's really good. He doesn't have anywhere near enough subscribers. I would love it if you would pump up his channel. It's just good playing. He, he does some gear review things. He does some stuff with some of the Line 6 presets. In fact, in this video, the name of it is Following Kirk, or Kirk Fletcher's Advice. Uh, and he's giving away a free Line uh, 6 HX Stomp preset, which is super cool. It sounds fantastic in the video. I love Kirk Fletcher, one of my favorite blues players. Uh, and apparently he watched a video where Kirk says, you know, basically you got to go and play what you want to play. He's killing that here. Just a fantastic video of him jamming. Like I said, his channel, 
lots of great playing, cool reviews, just just they're well done, they're shot well, and I, I don't even think he has 8,000 subscribers yet, so let's change that. Go and hit him up. Uh, and then sort of a bit of a tie for that last spot. We, we have uh, met, met a guy who's sort of become one of our friends, another North Carolina guy uh, who has a fantastic channel called The World's Okayest Guitar Player, which I just think is, is hilarious. You know, I've seen that on shirts and things. It's awesome that he's using that as his channel. And man, it's just him hanging out, doing covers. It's shot really well, it's well done. It's nothing, you know, crazy. He, he's literally just covering the songs. I'm gonna link a video where he's covering the Eagles one of these nights. And he's actually playing, he's got the book and he talks about the notes and the melody line. He's reading and playing the melody line on the guitar. So it's really cool. He's just a cool guy. I would love it if you guys would go and check his channel out. Give him some likes, subscribe. Uh, yeah, it's just fun. And he seems like a, a super nice dude. So we, we would like to, to push that up. Positivity deserves to be rewarded in this world, especially, so check him out. The jam of the week is from Cool Backing Tracks. <laughs> the name of the track is uh, Country Country Jam. It says D5 in Dorian and Mixolydian. So there's a lot going on. It's actually a really simple, sort of like Southern Rock Country, country Jam. I had a good time playing over it. My video is already out. I did the same thing I did for last week's Jam of the Week where I actually talked through my mindset of what I was thinking scale-wise uh, and talking through those modes a little bit. I actually talked a little bit about, I played slide and part of it talked about, you know, some little, some hacks for slide and, and making things you're doing sound like you're playing modally even if you're just using pentatonic scales. So hopefully you guys dig that, check that out. That is on my YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. I am really quickly approaching that 1,000 subscriber mark. Thanks in part a lot to you guys from Casino going in and checking it out. So uh, there'll be a link to that. Please check that out. Let me know if you dig the mini lessons or if I should shut up and only do the jams. I'm fine with that as well. So let me know in the comments of that video what you prefer. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me on Fret Buzz. If you've not clicked like and subscribe, make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss our videos. Lots of videos of me and Baxter coming out almost every day. Uh, lots of demos coming out. We've got all kinds of new stuff on order. So check us out. Thank you for hanging out with us. I'll see you next week on the Fret Bus.